back to Chief Meteorologist Alan Hall, because Alan, you've been keeping a close eye. You and Kristen have been keeping a very close eye on everything Beryl's been up to. Yeah, Kristen, Carly, Faith, myself, we've been on this, you know, for I think it was before last week we started saying, hey, there's a tropical wave out here in the Atlantic. This is unusual, right? For for late June, that's when we were talking about it. It was late June and then into the 1st of July when Beryl was a Cat 5 hurricane about to move into the Caribbean. Um, we're, a lot of people start talking about, okay, the, the track. You've heard the references to Harvey in some of the reports, right? And if you're just looking at the track alone, they all look the same. They all have that same track through the Caribbean. A lot of them do through the Gulf and then eventually making landfall in Texas. But there's a lot more uh, to it than just that that track on paper and that a lot to it has to do what's happening uh, up above us. So this scenario way different than it was back in 2017. We'll pull up the radar here because there are some showers uh, moving through parts of the coastal bend. We'll take a little tour of them, point out some features on the radar. If we can get that full screen, please um, show show what's going on. There we go. Thank you. Um, the, there's some outflow coming off of some of these showers and that is rain cooled air working through Mathis, Orange Grove, Alice, Benavides, and even into Foul Furious. You had a, oh, that's really cool. Out in Foul Furious where this arrow is, watch how the outflow pops up a little shower, gets you a little shower west of Foul Furious. That was courtesy outflow off of some feeder bands on the extreme western periphery of what is still a tropical storm. We got the update. It's still a tropical storm, 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, so still, it is still not a hurricane, even though it looks pretty good on its radar presentation. We're not looking at satellite here um, because the radar, obviously we can see where the rain is, where the heavy stuff is, and the storm, it's got to get a little closer to land. Um, so the radar sites in Brownsville, Corpus Christi, up the coast in Houston can see it. We've gotten a lot of questions about how far away and at what time this will pass Corpus Christi. I think it'll move north of Corpus Christi. 10, 11 o'clock, I would suspect that when we're on the news tonight, uh, that's about the time that this storm is going to be, you know, 80 to 90 miles to the east of Corpus Christi en route to and landfall about six hours after that toward Matagorda County, which is east uh, of the Matagorda Bay area. So the landfall is going to be uh, up into the middle Texas coast right around here where that center line is going. Uh, the, the slow intensification of this, despite again, a decent looking radar presentation is likely because of dry air working in to this storm. I'm going to bring back the Saharan dust map because to show you how the air flows in. You see how all the wind circulates around it. There's our offshore flow right coming in around the storm and that then gets pulled in. So some of that dust is getting pulled into the center of the storm. And I, I really do think that the dust is having an effect on mitigating the strength and the rapid intensification that the hurricane center would be saying was they were saying it would be possible. And again, it's it's all over the dust. The dust is in there. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we're not seeing that intensification to this point yet. Um, so current forecast cone shows that cat one status, 85 mile per hour wind gusting to 100 at landfall. And then it's quick route up to the Great Lakes region. And the reason for that pull, this is another reason this is not Harvey, right? Harvey, what we were looking at with that system in Harvey, I'm just going to draw on the map here. This is my best John Madden here. Harvey had a big area of high pressure here, and that was blocking the storm from going up. Harvey couldn't escape the Texas Gulf Coast. This storm has free movement. It's going to be, there's a window there, there's an avenue there, and with this low pressure, this trough that's working through uh, up into the, the plains states, this trough in the upper level winds, 
that feature right there is going to be what accelerates that northward movement and you know it's going to it's not going to be a prolific massive rain producer because of that sure some locations will get rain but it's not going to drop 60 inches of rain in southeast texas the way harvey did it's just going to be too fast even though the rain is going to be pretty heavy for a lot of people. It's not going to be anywhere close to the level uh, that Harvey did. So wind speed forecast. I know we get a lot of questions about this. If there are going to be some tropical storm force conditions, it's going to be close to the center of this thing. I think the Copano Bay and San Antonio Bay, those areas, 35 to 40 gusts, maybe up to 50 at times. That's going to be tonight and early tomorrow morning. I don't see a wind threat in Corpus Christi other than, you know, an occasional 40 mile per hour gust. So that's how the wind field looks. How does it look into the future? Kristen Wallace here with a look at what to expect heading into tomorrow. Back to work for some people, given this forecast, Kristen. Yeah, definitely. So